Welcome, everyone, to the LOS Scholastic Champs Back to School number two. We already had one of these last weekend. I was there, and it was a ton of fun. We're looking forward to that again with some familiar names coming into today's round of four. They will be two best of ones and a best of three after everyone competed yesterday, six teams, to determine who those top four were. So the semifinals will be best of one. That's what we'll be getting into as soon as we're done talking here, basically. Uh, but I'd like to introduce us, but, you know, like uh, I'm Zombie Grub. I was here last week. And this time I'm with Hail Monkey Man. Is that the full title? Is there a hail as a monkey man? Like It's uh, it's whatever you end up wanting to call me. We, you, if you want to hail me as a monkey, if you feel like I've evolved into being a man, I can deserve both. It's okay. I mean, I, I can. I, if, some, if you just want to be like, Man, I'll be like, what? I will answer to nearly everything these days. But it's awesome to be here in, in the revolving door of casters that want to be able to join you, zombies. So hope you're having a great weekend, and this one's going to be a great competition as well. I hope so. We actually had some pretty cool rounds. Uh, you know, we didn't get to necessarily a lot of the third maps that I guess we were hoping for, but some of the rounds were very, very fun. And it's already been a little bit different this week anyways, where our finalists from last week, our champions actually, were unable to make it on through. But we'll talk more about that after we give a quick shout out to everyone that helps make this tournament happen. Thank you to League OS for powering the tournament, as well as Mountain for sponsoring the tournament and giving out the prizes today. First place will be receiving five mice of their own design. Seem pretty cool. And then we also vote for an MVP player who gets a pretty awesome keyboard as well. So big thank you to them. And our first match is going to be Divine High School versus Springfield Capitals. One of those names is familiar. Divine Child High School coming in new, at least from last weekend. Divine Child as an esports program, I've been able to see them not only flourish in Valorant, but also other platforms like Rocket League and more. So this is definitely a school system that has been able to promote its players, its students in the right direction. And they have some of the most affluent players in the entirety of the lobby. I think the highest actually that we're gonna be able to see today is Don't Touch My Rice, who maybe if they'll get very mad, very angry if anyone's trying to get to their snack foods and they're really gonna have a lot to say, but they don't do it alone as they're gonna have uh, Totally Icy as well as Merc to be able to really back them up, especially in the kill department. That team has been very, very efficient about what they do. They went 39 and 11 being able to make it to this top mark here in this weekend. Wow, yeah. They are looking at like the favorites coming in as the number one seed. And of course, their first round opponents are going to be number four, Springfield Capitals. So Springfield Capitals definitely having a, uh, a high mountain to climb. Excuse me, Shrimp Mountain. Uh, but we're getting <laughs> into game. We're actually going to be going on to Bind for what is, again, a best of one semifinal. Our second semifinal coming up after this Epic Comets versus Lincoln Way East Griffins. Familiar name for those who were watching last weekend. But let's get into it. Let's actually see what agents are being chosen here on bind you know even with the dynamicness of everyone in the world being nerfed it's really yes. not changed up or slowed down too many as long as you're still kind of executing to old meta it just takes a little bit longer to get your util it, interesting position though as we see on our defensive side is you do have divine child don't touch don't touch my rice is gonna be one of two controllers which you often get to see as a brim and as a viper but this time it's gonna be an omen from batman and rice who is gonna be hanging on to that harbor otherwise it's pretty kosher on to having that chamber as well as the rays but without that brim stem to get them in very quick they're gonna have to do it themselves I guess so. Interesting to see Harbor come out. I actually feel like, I, well, actually even seeing more of them, but you said, you know, everyone got nerfed and then, yeah, I mean, it, it, he's an interesting character. I just call back to those times in which everyone seemed to hate him when he came out. Mm -hmm. But I think we've kind of settled on uh, how good he can be. And uh, meanwhile, we're getting into game, actually. So we don't get to talk much more about the potential here and the ideas. We're actually going to get into round number one and see who comes out on top. Again, don't touch my rice, kind of looking like one of the best players uh, across the entire tournament. Uh, going to be definitely paying attention a lot to them, seeing what they can do. Yeah, this is one of those players because they're at that affluential mark. Being the immortal one of this, uh, and, you know, the highest of really across the entirety of the competition going mm -hmm. into this weekend. I think, you know, we, we lay a lot of hate, a lot of blame on the harbor, but it's up to those that are just good uh, head clickers in this platform to show us what he can actually do. We got to see that really work when it comes to maps like Lotus, working around uh, uh, big uh, controllers that have been long standing forever like Viper. And 
And to that mark, seeing no Viper on this is actually super surprising to me. And it's going to really be up to, especially when you're talking about the attacking side from, from that Cypher onto C carrot to dictate pace. Same to be said of the of Totally Icy onto that Ray. You're going to have to use those paint shells to really take away open runs, just mm. get, going down mid, seeing if they can be able to find anything in A. But this is a composition made for a fist fight here, zombie. This fight might be happening. I mean, we do have Springfield Capitals on the attack and tacking into Divine Child High School. We're set up on the defense now, knowing that B is going to be a sight here. The hits. And we've already got some damage done to a few of these members. In fact, almost going down here. Still everyone on the board. Just a lot of injured parties from Springfield Capitals as they are unsuccessful trying to break through here and are forced to reconsider. We do have Rex taking down one of the Vine Child High School. The defense starting to get a little broken, but look at all of the red on Springfield Capitals. Finally, some of them starting to go down as well. As we did have the rotate over onto the A, we do have a plant coming in, but the question is, can they actually defend it? It's on Touch My Rice are looking at two and certainly looking for more turns around and everyone just collapsed in on a cornered Springfield. So the defuse will be coming through. Don't touch my rice. Knowing that the the uh, retake is going to be big name of the game as well. They're going to be playing a bit passive, at least to start off these opening rounds. And you saw the reception. You saw the callouts that we got to see as well as they brought in Batman onto the paranoia to take away what U-Haul could have been. And it's treacherous. You try to be able to go into lamps just underneath. And as you saw from, uh, I believe it was Yami, who was right around that corner, it's basically scare tactics. Will you find kind of first contact there? But no, they're already showcasing that the communication is up and running and it looks like that we're going to be having maybe that lean spread over to hookah this time be a bit slower as they scout around checking around so i mean with the first round going to divine child high school we're just gonna call him divine child at this point it sounds a bit myth mythological but that's what we're gonna go for um i mean we do expect them to win the second one they got those guns we can see what springfield can actually do in the situation if they get that first pick again maybe they can make something roll out of that so this time with less injured members that's so far on the very slow approach not going to be finding too much and actually rex about to get into a duel that they are not bound to win okay no merc actually missed a little bit of scouting then, as they do survive, but no uh, intents shown quite yet where that spike is actually headed. They're going to play out this default and see if they can get any aggression to be punished early by Divine Child. The Falcons staying very disguised and very disciplined, but this is now going to be a direct hit coming through mid, and they do not down check into that U-Haul, so they're going to burst onto the scene. Yeah, man down already. See if they can make something happen again. They're going to be able to get that plant, but last time they were tucked into this corner. It didn't really work out with the rest of Divine Child coming in, and that seems to be happening again. Got multiple angles here that they have to watch out for. Don't touch my rice once again, getting some kills. This time around, however, Jam able to return at least two. And actually, on that note, we have 2v2. The very injured Springfield Capitals yet again down to just one. Yammy managing to pick up a, a Spectre. She's going to try and do something. Unfortunately, cannot. Batman will get the defuse. Uchla will get the last kill and move on to round three with a 2-0 here for Divine Child. It's not a bad position for the Capitals to put themselves into. They took three off the board to make mm. a rebuy uh, less inviting, especially if you want to rock into a bonus. And so this one will be the stereotypical win to buy your AR. Go over, get your rifles, and see how it really kind of stands up. Biggest patch change that really came into this game is how they were trying to narrow the scope and uh, I guess overall frequency of big AOE type ultimates by making them more expensive. You see that on mm -hmm. uh, people like the uh, Fade. And so Rex is going to have one of those tough sit situations and Merc is going to look immediately for this duel and try to run away, but they're getting flashed and chased down as Hookah becomes the likes of the Capitals. Yeah, a little bit more of a rush. Merc was trying to be in position to at least pick off one before getting overrun. Unfortunately, unable to do so. Fortunately, is able to escape. So calling over the other teammates, trying to defend this B site. 
Uh, Huka definitely contaminated with a lot of Springfield Capitals. They could be all moving on forward. Might have missed their opportunity as the rest of our defenders have moved on over. Everyone's still alive on the board here. I take it back. Don't touch my rice coming in. Getting one. Batman with another. So far, a good defense from Divine Child, but they're starting to fall as well. Rex coming in once more. It's going to be hunting. We slow down a little bit. And another two duels going in the way of Divine Child. And that temporary slowdown, unfortunately, leads into a 3-0. As we now have that real momentum being built for Divine Child. Winning that round especially giving you a confidence booster. That man is just <laughs> so cerebral. Saying, I'm the knight, literally living in their own shadow and taking on two from that corner out of elbow on B. Making enough time for Don't Touch My Rice to be able to make that long flank. And they're currently eight and one. You've got six kills to this entire Divine Child Falcon mm. squad right now. And you got two that are not touched at this moment. So you see kind of this force of an anti-eco as well as they're going to keep about 1,500, maybe 12, just in the back pockets for the Capitals. And at this point... They're saying, okay, we, want, we don't want to be able to retreat too far. And they could actually take the Falcons by surprise into this fight because they could be thinking that this is just going to be a longer save, but you will see Yami fall at the board. And so that investment already has one fell down. They're going to transfer over. They are indeed. Transport over onto B. Of course, the big sound alerting the defenders of their intents. And it is Batman who's going to be holding the line first and foremost. Unable to get anyone coming off from Hookah. There we go. Now we'll be able to find one. Looking for the second. Wins that duel as well. It's going to be flawless from Divine Child, who seem to be ramping up with the rounds. Each one better than the last. Yeah, this one's becoming a little bit more difficult. And of course, when you went anti-eco, because of the losing streak, they knew that they're going to have enough in the po back pocket. But otherwise, it's, it's not great knowing and having to prepare a zombie that you're like, well, we've lost all these. And so we've got enough cash because we keep losing that we can actually buy up. But they can still maintain being chippy, I guess, against the likes of Divine Child. But they really have to be able to take this gun round, which is going to be the big, the first one of this entire B01. They can be able to run away with it if they can they got a couple of ultimates on their side, the attackers here. Let's see if they can actually open up any sights, leaving the bomb behind as they move forward. Default in the scout. Puka is uh, open, and we do have oh, a situation where two get picked off. Divine Child now in 3v5. Nicely done. Actually, best result so far for Springfield Capitals. Haven't made the move yet, but oh. they've really opened up an opportunity over on B. Unfortunately, Rex unable to pop off in this round gets... Taken down by Don't Touch My Rice, but I'm still looking at that B hit. I gotta go and, of course, get back that uh, that bomb. And now it's looking a little less promising. Divine Child trying to spread out to the men that are still alive. It's more ambiguous as to where the actual bomb is going. Looks to be over an A. Something that Divine Child, I mean, might be a little surprised by. The can Don't Touch My Rice take on numbers. It's actually the big test. They're staying behind the mid boxes there just outside of showers. And so now they're taking on Yami, but Yami will win a big fight. They are able to keep their life with it. And that's going to be a four on two. So a great aggression. Taps was very method. Oh, no, that's a word. They were very smart <laughs> being able to make their way through mid being, and being able to make sure they got that pop flash on. But now putting the smoke out into heaven, this is going to be a tough retake. And maybe the first out here for the Capitals as you do drop to the ground. Jam is able to drop him down to just one player left. Yeah, nicely done, actually. Springfield Capitals ended up getting their first point on the board, but also four left alive at the end of it. Actually winning a lot of those duels in isolation, right? They just actually kind of started to build up a real victory from the first go to the second. It wasn't all a bunch of mass, uh, you know, chaos going down. That was very methodical. I also, I, I don't remember <laughs> what my hang-up word is, but I also have one that's like, you know, I speak for a living. But uh, yeah, it was yeah. great stuff from Springfield. I, I was thinking Speaking of methodical, logical, and mythological all at the same time, and the brain doesn't like words like that at all, being spoken on top of each other. Yeah, well, uh, very understandable. Let's see if they can carry this momentum. Uh, that was definitely a fantastic round, just, you know, as is, but then especially considering the way the rest of the rounds went, hopefully it can give them some confidence. They still have a couple of ults, but of course now Divine Child also with a few of their own, some great guns as well. We got Merc on the operator, just waiting for any attempt to move down to that B site, but... Uh, I actually don't think they'll be heading over that direction anytime soon. Be long. Probably looking more towards hookah. 
do want to see if there's going to be any of that creep Ooh. out because based on where, the, where this attack is going, they have two choices. They have to narrow the scope through that window, but this operator is staring down with a long barrel and taps could be one tap pretty quickly and they're going to be laid to waste. And that means that the read is good and they're going to be able to rotate one over. And because of that trademark being popped away with, you're left with even less options because do you stick around? Do you burn a little bit of extra time, but you don't have time to burn when it's only 40 seconds left. Yes, now the timer is starting to become a bit of an issue. Very unfortunate there from TAPS. They wanted to be able to probably go in at least in multiple directions, get some scouting done, and that just ended with that first critical pick. And now a bit of urgency to their movements. Not usually what you want, especially as you lose yet another. Rex goes down. And this doesn't look to be something that the Springfield Capitals can actually win, especially as two more get taken down by Don't Touch My Rice. And there is another flawless for Divine Child, kind of putting their foot down after that last round. Able to find some great picks early on in that previous round, and that's really what gave them the advantage. Even though they had touch, don't touch my rice. I was about to say touch my rice. That's the opposite of this identity <laughs> for this player. But though they did have the numbers on them, it's really just kind of standing strong. And also because when you start to rush, you really kind of lose your mindfulness of what you mm -hmm. got to go to get to site and execute with. And so they just took him by surprise, got an easy 2K, and then you're left with one who revealed themselves coming out of showers. So at this point. It really is indicative of the first 15 seconds or so of getting those picks for the Capitals because otherwise Springfield have not been able to really kind of push on the site. But they've got a presence of numbers. I think this 5v2, you saw them find so much space and so much victory and success if they just do it. Now they're trying to do it a little bit faster, but they've taken over that mid lane. Definitely intention here. Batman's going to have to skedaddle, at least temporarily, wait for the rest of the team. Back away entirely off of that site. So many ults have been popped. And even a Cypher ult coming in here as well. Getting lots of information. We have a 5v4 situation in which Divine Child defenders are down a man. And now forced into that retake scenario. We are planning their way of doing so. With a man down. They got coming in from Elbow, but quickly found out. Seeker able to take advantage of that. Taps also getting one before being taken down. Uchla starting to come in onto the site. Taking down two. Looking for a third. Finds it. And the uh, now problem is, of course, that spike timer. Well, now the problem was being left alone, but there is two problems there for the defenders. And they do end up losing that round, able to push the defenders entirely off that site to get into that position to defend the retake. And especially with Divine Child being down a man, Springfield with another convincing round. Didn't be kind of going convincing round to convincing round to convincing round. It's uh, it was a triple ult investment round though. You had true, the, yeah. You you had the uh, the showstopper kickoff. Just be able to get a bit of extra damage, and Batman nearly fell to that. Then you also had the knife fall, which really cleared that space initially. And then you had the neural theft. So now that there, you're gonna see a less of a distinction, and you have all that built on the other side, and Merc continues to find value out of this operator in these early few seconds. Yeah, this did not bode well for the uh, two rounds ago here, five, and it looks to not bode well again. Springfield Capitals down. falling down pretty quickly, and now the spike in a very unfortunate scenario. Oh, that's going to be difficult to actually grab with two members of Divine Child looking to just plant their crosshairs over any angle going over into that spike. What can Springfield do here? They have to come from an angle they're just not expecting, and this one's pretty much projected because you do have the Prowler, and they basically just double swing. <laughs> left with one HP, C Carrot. Well, now they're just going to put every bullet that it possibly exists next to this particular bomb, and they're just going to creep their way wow. through. They're expecting them to run over to B, though, and you do already have the Omen be able to run over there as Batman will go through TP, but this is C Carrot trying to play with the Cerebrum zombie, but they have one HP, so just a little, little, we'll knock them over. Anything will. This is left. problematic. They're going to have to always catch their opponents by surprise. And, of course, isolates, right? Actually get 1v1s continuously, something that ideally my child would not let happen. But, oh, there we go. There's a little poke forward and then just an easy kill at the end. Defenders will hold their ground. 6-2 to two here. I, I mean, we're definitely seeing some promise from Springfield Capitals. But to actually get, like, kind of a running momentum, that proves to be very difficult.
Yeah, it has. And we've not really seen Springfield prioritize kind of building up that eco, which is just so, so rich for the side of Divine Child. They have been, you know, having extra credits on their back pocket and since the very first round. And we've seen a couple of flawlesses. So the rich are getting richer. And Merc, well, they were trying to kill a rabbit with a cannon. And otherwise, we're able to just kind of poke it dead and have themselves a nice fresh dinner. 13 and 4, though, touch my, don't touch my rice. Really has been that influential player. And they've been going for first contact, but maybe they'll be felled by this judge. It's about how they can take care of space. Oh, unfortunately, Seacarrot is able to dodge away, but not Yammy. And now that's been revealed. Not going to be making too much headway, but two drawn into showers. Perhaps the rest of the team from Springfield can come on through. Going into Cubby. They might have an opening. Oh, they're not going to go for it, actually. Everyone joining back up here. Going to be going where it looks to be Hookah again. I mean, at this point, you should be expecting Merc to be holding B long. So not bothering to go down there. That's happened twice. They've been picked off for trying. Through Hookah, perhaps just overwhelm whoever might be looking to defend there, which is, of course, little Batman, who just gets that scout and is able to run away. I mean, smart play there. No reason to be a hero. The rest of the team coming on over for the defense. Get a dry peek out through this Dark Tripper, though, and you will have the Pathfinder. They do at least get him in tube, and so they are stunned up for the most part. Z Carrot finds Batman, but not before they swing right back around with a baseball bat and tap down tap. Z Carrot finds a second, and the Neural Theft will get used for a second time. Name that a record, as especially that never happens in my ranked games, but Merc is still trying to be able to squeeze them from both sides as they will have the rotation coming in from A site. D Kurt actually doing quite well. Just want to give him a shout out after this finale. Uh -oh. As we are heading towards it, C Carrot is uh, stuck in a tunnel with three people bearing down on him. So unfortunately, does go down. Not much else to do. And the defuse will come through. Uh, but seriously, just want to give the shout out to C Carrot. I know we don't we talk about don't touch my rice. They are doing exactly what we expected for their rank. But C Carrot really coming in instrumental, of course, stopping the the scoreboard, but then also being able to get so many neural thefts. Uh, that's I mean, that's good stuff for them. Unfortunately, not able to actually win that particular round, but I really am pleased to see, I suppose, that we have someone also popping off another team. Yeah, and it's also difficult to do kind of as a, uh, a cypher in general coming into this map. Yeah. Find. You have you have great setups when you, you can be able to de deny through window, great cams, but otherwise, it's you're left with a camera in your palm and everyone's staring at you like, are you going to be useful? And Seacare so far has proven that they're, they're uh, more superior than the average cucumber from the uh, maybe the same part of the ocean they hail, uh, hail from. But otherwise... Don't touch my rice. They're doing exactly what we expected them to do so far, and it's been a receive what the Capitals will throw at them kind of dynamic, and they've really not panicked every time that they've had to rotate to them. No, no. I mean, I think that's kind of what we're seeing here is just not a lot of panic from Divine Child. Occasionally, Springfield put into that position where they have to rush to try and get that uh, spike planted, and... That's times where it's not really doing any favors. The two rounds, they have won a lot because of some early duels going their way, able to take that man advantage. One was that way. One was another, which they were able to use three ultimates to get onto sites. And uh, unfortunately, none more as far as victories for them. But with a timeout and perhaps uh, regrouping, we can see if they can start to bring this back. The Batman with that Odin. Where is that sitting? All the way backside oh B? All right. That's not the threat. <laughs> no. Not the threat so far. Yes. <laughs> we do have going Hashtag. through showers. <laughs> we'll see if they decide uh, other, you know, to, to take their approach elsewhere. Actually okay. getting the orb and getting the first kill. Taps takes down. Don't touch my rice. Also fantastic kill to get right off the bat. We do have a uh, trade back, of course. Still a 4v4 situation as we are approaching on the A hits. Trying to make some more entryway. Not actually getting on the site yet. It's proving difficult. And now Uchla looking to grab another. In fact, they do. It's a 4v2. The spike is down. Once again, an awkward situation. Springfield uh, down to Sea Carrots, who has done some wonderful things, but not able to actually power through a you know a round victory. And Taps, who is almost dead anyway. Matter of time here as they're found in the corner. Grenade will take them down. They take down one before going. I mean, that's better than nothing. But defenders will put an eighth on the board. 
Considering that they had popped up a lawn chair uh, next to truck and was praying that they could just go on vacation right there. Seeing if anyone would run around the corner, but they gave away their initial shots. And so this one was just a matter of a war of attrition. Even though they got rid of Don't Touch My Rice. You would think, okay, big power player off the field. We could really be able to run away with that. But they never really kind of moved off from the initial play. They've been willing to rotate. This time around, it seemed like they found that early pick and they're like, oh, this is it. We could be able to stick on A. They could have easily kind of shifted over since so much of the rotation was allowed to dynamically move back to that site. So kind of getting stuck in a one track mind at times when they do find those minor successes. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right about that. And uh, certainly being stuck next to truck is, it seems to be a familiar uh, thing for poor old Springfield Capitals who are uh, once again getting gunned down, and they are an inferior guns. They can try and make do what they can in a trade here once again. Don't touch my rice actually going down. Give them a little more confidence, but trying to bust open into that B site. It does seem to be the call here. We have, uh, who is it here? Rex trying to hold any potential rotation. Or even call out that A might be a little more open. 4v4. Still a chance here for Springfield Capitals, but those guns, not ideal. Now, the only inferior gun is the one that can't get kills, but that really is up to the operator behind them. But it's very true. They're going to have to make this more into a CQC sort of situation, and you do see them sticking at least one around. Good discipline on both sides, as you see them not over-rotating. But there is this... Kind of uh, decoy play, as you do have C-Carrot wait next to Teleporter. Now they join the team, and this is going to be a 4v2 rush. And I think they're going to be able to take that point of contact just outside of truck. Yeah, I really like this tempo change. Unfortunately, it might not do very <laughs> well for them. Oh, no, they are looking for the showstopper. Oh, there it is. They knew someone was going to be coming out of there, and they find the kill. The rest of the team going down here for Springfield Capitals. Five seconds left over anyway, and there we have it. Totally... One CY, totally icky. That's what I would say. But they've been getting a 3K there. They uh, they held that site almost by their lonesome. Springfield Capitals, I think, did have a great idea, but not able to actually make it work. It's 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 kind of sad because it was you see those decoys sometimes come out of ultimates, especially whenever we have the lockdowns expended on, this, on things like Ascent. But you don't have that right now, and that's even more expensive than they used to be. Not icky at all. They were just being icy, waiting for their moment to use that <laughs> showstopper, even though it was definitely a rocket to like a 2 HP uh, agent. Either way, yeah. they got the job done. And Capitals, they didn't use the highest of their uh, eco so they could at least have something for this final gun round going into the last round of this first half. That's a good point. Oh, there's a chance they can actually bring it back. They swap sides, but man, uh, Divine Child really led up to that number one C. Don't touch my rest of the operator actually starting to get something done. <laughs> grabs two. Batman with the Odin grabs three and that is a flawless as we swap. Uh, not the confidence boost that you were hoping for. 10 to 2 as well. What a mountain to climb here for Springfield in this, again, best of one. No other chances beyond this. You know, this is exactly where Springfield wants them. 10 to curse got the upgrade from the 9 3 when we saw it during uh, Masters because of DRX and Billy Billy. So this is, they're just matching the pros. That midpoint, though, they're going to have to really turn that into a multiplication table of extra rounds. And it's really going to have to start with this pistol if they do not drive with momentum here you can basically ride it off they're gonna have to eco or they're gonna have to anti-eco and really just kind of force it in but this is also maybe their best dynamic because of where they're gonna be able to put c carrot it looks like they're gonna be running into a default so at this point divine child can just go wherever they want yeah i'll pull forward met with a bird as you said, this has to start right here. Pistol rounds. Maybe you can get this third one. Then maybe they get that fourth one. But you still have so many more rounds so that Divine Child can actually get uh, money back, buy up the guns, and take chances as well. Familiar situation. Uh, so we did see a couple of uh, more one-sided victories, I suppose, in last weekend as well. Divine Child really is coming in here as the favorites, especially with the high-ranking players on their team. Seems the decision has been made. More movement over onto the B site. Keeping their 
wits about them. And also Merc being able to TP away if they find that contact. Oh, they were searching for Yami that entire time, seeing if someone was in that little pocket corner. But now because of that pick happening, they're going to rotate back. But the power play has been pulled. You have four stacked on the B, and now you have all of one lonesome player in the form of taps hanging uh. out backside box, and they are executed. So now this is full site control. Yeah, yeah, it is. Going to be able to get set up here and uh, hold on to the retake. I mean, that's something that Divine Child is really good about. Whenever they weren't exactly sure where that hit was coming, they made sure to keep the man who was defending alive for as long as possible. The pullback, the uh, defense ended up being with every man alive. Even so, maybe Springfield Capital still has that chance. They are actually taking down quite a few. Unfortunately, don't touch my rice, taking this opportunity to show off their class. Gets a 3k so far. And they do have that spike to play around. Oh. However, Jam with two headshots nicely done is going to be able to get the defuse. Yes. So, 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 so close. But they do get it. Nice clutch indeed. Love it. You knew that they had to take that fight because it was in a perfect position for a double swing, especially when they put out that dark cover. That's one of the few situations where you actually might extend it further from the door. But Jam... Immediately going quiet. Again, like none of my teammates that I ever get to see where they decide to poke it and then they stomp. They know you're not there. Come on. But they played that very close to the vest, able to go and take them down and give a breath of life for Springfield. That was the first one that they needed to really start the snowball momentum, but that's only the first snowflake. Yeah, the, and the problem is necessarily even this round, which they might again win. And uh, certainly hope so to keep the uh, the chances alive. But then it's it is the next round, the potential bonus, right? That that's going to be uh, the real stickler, uh, the real determination, determining factor of whether or not they can actually bring this back. Just so darn difficult to do. And there's really no guarantee that they win this one either, just because they have the better guns. We know how Divine Child can work, and uh, looks like they are going to be looking for an early pick as they head over Jam is waiting they know about it as well and they're gonna send him back over into the lamps but again such a great point springfield capitals uh, able to keep at least uh, a man alive a little bit longer taps actually able to get one as well but uh coming in oh now 4v3 definitely hope here for springfield yami trying to swing immediately into lamps and you do have one on top of truck as well it's 3v4 as yukla it's hanging out around that corner, so they pretty much got him cornered, and they have to spring their way out, but like you talked about, they ain't got the guns, and Yami is doing quick work of them. From this golden gun all the way, can they sharpshoot? But no, they have a dark cover straight in front of them. Everyone is surrounding that spike, but moving here forward, this is all of a cleanup situation with only 15 seconds to go. It is about how Springfield will handle the buy-up by Divine Child going into the next round. That is going to be the dictation point of greater extended success or otherwise. See, Carrot does catch him on the tripwire, and so they will grab themselves a fourth. You know, it was going to be difficult grabbing that spike. Not much to do there. But as you're saying, uh, now, you know, I guess we're both kind of saying this is kind of the real test. If Springfield Capitals can take this round on defense, then there's a lot of hope in their potential on defense as a half, right? And then maybe we can kind of chalk it up to their attack not being as good. They actually do bring it back, and we get ourselves a very, very close match indeed. That has yet to be proven. I mean, at the end of the day, got to be honest, and that number one seed is looking like the number one seed. They're looking like they're going to be the winners. It just might take a, a little bit more effort than they might have expected if Springfield Capitals end up being better defenders. They are not being shy about this. No, they're, they're going to have to forward. punch their way through. Like, might as well stomp, right? Just, hey, welcome. We've got a six-round diff on you. We want to be able to just kind of take this um, an immediate fight. So they're really kind of gauging them. And this is also their only warm-up if they are to inevitably make that final. Yeah, that's, a good, that's actually something I really considered, but you're absolutely right about that. Hopefully, they were practicing a little bit before this best of one, but absolutely right in the competitive mindsets. So this is where they get that practice. And they were not shy about making noise over onto B. One of them got picked off, uh, but then they decided to uh, rotate. Don't touch my rice. Able to take down two, actually, while this was all going down. Opening the site of A. So, I mean, this really is now very clear. And it felt like it was actually starting off okay for Springfield. It is now turned sour as they are forced to get into a retake situation up against those better guns of the Vine Child. 
actually surprised that we're not seeing them try at least maybe the most minor of splits north and south, but I guess because they do have the power play against them with that man up for Divine Child, they're just going to try and swing everything out from heaven. But you do have the high tide ready to make this much more difficult. I don't think anyone brought their waterings. The dark cover does happen, and Batman is waiting from out of lamps, and they are laying them low and to rest. No one else was felled from the Falcons, and that one did not go the way that Springfield hoped it would. No, no, it did not. Unfortunately, while the defense over on that B site was was totally fine, A site getting opened up by Don't mm -hmm. Touch My Rush, getting pried open. I mean, not only did they lose the two men defending there, but then also giving all that time for Divine Child to set up and defend. Uh, even if they had even managed to make some type of like three split thing going on here with a total crunch of the site, <sighs> almost impossible to actually win. Um, and now, you know, we're point away from match point, and the guns are good again. So I guess we still have a chance to put a stop right here, right now. Divine Child looking to once again enter into the B. A little bit quieter. They do send out some utility, though. And we do have a bit of a rotate, yeah. Actually, very much everyone from Springfield Capital is trying to come on over as they sniff out the attack. Fortunately, already losing one. At least a trade going through. Seeker, it's time to shine here. Uh, unfortunately, not able to. Batman takes them down. They're going to be able to use their ult to help out further. As now Divine Child up 4-2 to two and getting the spike planted. This will send them into match point if they end up winning. Can jam. Uh, nope, not him. Can taps take on 4. They're going to try. They might be playing taps at the end of this round. And it may be the last one that they're really going to have any big guns in because their eco is pretty much scuffed going into the next. They do get a spray through. They're going to have to get even more than that. They're going to be able to get at least a guiding light flash off of the corner, but it is split from left and right. Big pop flash from the dark cover. They saw one, but then they saw the dirt, and that's where they'll be buried, 12-4. And there is not a lot of credits for Springfield to go find to try and mount another defensive round. Maybe some bulldogs, but that's the only bark they'll maybe have. Yeah, yeah, it seems to be. Uh, that last round was super important. They had the guns. That was supposed to be the stopping point. And now we're going to kind of pull one out. Uh, a bit of a miracle to try and stop Divine Child at 12 and bring us into a, a potential overtime. You know, eight rounds away from that, though. That's going to be a lot to go up against. And again, starting this round without those great guns for us to buy up. And you can say that Sea Carrot does still have that ultimate. So if they can get a first pick and actually get that detection going, that would be fantastic. But just everyone piling in on A, changing the tempo a little bit. And once again, prying open the site. Taps goes down. Sea Carrot is still alive. Going <laughs> to Lamps. They were met with everyone from the team. Someone is going to be able to take them down. Unfortunately, this now puts this uh, defending team in a retake situation where they are also down by two. Now make that down by three. At least we'll get a little bit of a trade, but now we're only on one. It was Rex, and uh, we have Don't Touch My Rice getting the last kill. 13 to four is going to be the end score as Divine Child prove their prowess in Valorant and move on to those finals. GG's all around. Good showing from Springfield in a couple of those rounds. Just not able to link everything together. Really, it was a separation of how good the gun game was coming through for uh, Don't Touch My Rice as well as all of Divine Child versus a dependency on major ultimate utility for Springfield. When they could execute off of multiple from them, you saw them use them in triplicate. Really not a staggered, more of just, we must win from the, at least this one. It was more of a desperation point, and they couldn't really build upon that, which is unfortunate because it looked like they had some good moments. They just weren't able to really string them together, whereas the confidence from the Falcons, it's it's there. They're, they're, they're here as that number one seed from their previous 39-11 record, and 13-4 is a real big statement to make here in this first semifinal. To get them into that final, they're ready for the big dog plays out here in best of three. Well, that means there's another semifinal on the way to get them an opponent. Exactly. We're going to find out who was actually opposing them uh, with the next best of one semifinal. We're going to be getting into that, guys, uh, right after a quick break. First, thank you to Mons uh, Mountain once again for sponsoring the tournament. But let's head to that break and let's get ready for the next best of one semifinal. <laughs> 